Welcome back, my students, to a brand new episode of Comic Class. In today's lesson, guys, we're we'll going over a power steal of New 52 Batman. This does include Batman's feats from his New 52 iteration that includes Soul Series, as well as the Just League New 52 as well, and the stuff he went and did in that series. And yeah, it should be fun. Um, we're going to be going over, as always, his strength, his speed, his tech, and his durability. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into today's power steal. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to get over or go over is uh, New 52 Batman Strength. Now New 52 Batman Strength basically has different feats. We get to see that he was able to go up, up against like a juiced up Joker that's implied to have I guess either a uh, gone into the Lazarus Pit or something like that that made him way more uh, agile and uh, stronger. And Batman basically fought him to like through a death match and almost died himself. So it's not one of his most impressive feats, but still impressive nonetheless. Uh, we get to see that New 52 Batman basically was able to fight against his entire Rhodes Gallery uh, during a break in into Arkham, or you know, a break in or a break out of Arkham that the villains were trying to do. And Batman, with the help of Dick Grayson posing as the Joker, were able to fight against Batman's like entire Rhodes Gallery one after the other sides are like tag teaming him at the same time. Uh, we also get to see that he's able to fight people like Mr. Freeze. Uh, easily that has stuff like his freeze gun um, we don't see it on panel but we can imagine he was able to get it uh, before this fight began he fought against people like uh, Clayface as well as this giant like sumo dude um, and the sumo guy is like huge so we can assume that Batman and as we see uh, throughout his combat series of New 52 as well as the Just Lead uh, series that he's able to fight against opponents that are way bigger than him so that's not really an issue when uh, Batman's having to fight people way stronger than him or you know physically bigger than him uh, he's also went up against the Talon the Talons are actually like superhuman you can look at him kind of like a Captain America type figure um, very skilled in hand-to-hand -hand and weapons combat and yeah he basically fought one to a standstill and actually got the upper hand while they were free falling off of like a very tall building and got the talent to basically uh kill itself basically at falling down a uh, massive height while batman was able to catch uh catch like a ledge or something so that was really cool uh batman's also able to fight against tons of people at once that's something he does continuously throughout his entire single uh solo uh run uh from you know the new 52 and yeah, like I said, he did fight against the Talon, and this is when Batman was kind of like uh, tested his durability. We'll get more into this during his durability uh, portion of the video, but he was basically starved and basically was like dehydrated as well. You know, he was barely hydrated. He was able to fight against this like super soldier like opponent um, and defeated the Talon pretty uh, easily once he finally lost control and just gave in to his anger, as you could say. And it was a really cool fight, and we get a lot of awesome action panels during this fight. And Batman basically uh, gets the upper hand on this like super soldier-like fighter. Again, showing that Batman has a really good reputation and is continuously shown to be able to fight people that are way stronger than him. And even beat them at uh, most points. So that's very impressive. And that's all we really have for him in our strength section. So now let's jump into the next theme, which is his speed. Now, Batman has a few speed feats. He was able to fight against multiple of his Rhodes Gallery, as I already mentioned, but he uh, basically got attacked by Scarecrow um, almost point blank and was able to react to it and put on his gas mask that he keeps on him. He was also able to dodge Mr. Freeze's uh, ice beams, which move really, really fast. Um, he's continuously shown to be able to dodge uh, gunfire. Um, bullet speed basically is nothing to Batman. Uh, we have a bit of an outlier in that there was a scene where uh, Joker used some type of like uh, fake out to basically try to get Batman to sacrifice himself for this kid that was going to have his parents killed in front of him by someone using a gun, kind of using Batman's PTSD against him, uh, which made Batman have to react super fast uh, to put himself in front of the bullet for this kid and his family. And, um, Again, the parents, uh, I believe the parents died, and this turned out to be a uh, dude Thomas who became one of the Robins. He wears like the yellow outfit, I believe, in the Rebirth, uh, 
you know, continuity for Batman. So, uh, one day we'll probably go over that character. But yeah, but this was like his introduction, and Batman basically sacrifices himself for him. Um, but the, the bullet didn't put Batman down or anything like that. And uh, to be fair, he was putting himself in front of it. It's not really an anti feat, but it is kind of an outlier. And it was only, you know, because of the situation he was in that he got attacked by the bullet, basically. So I believe contest doesn't matter, and Batman didn't like get speed blitz or anything like that. Uh, so he's definitely above uh, bullet speed 100%. Uh, Batman was able to react to an explosion. That the talent set off and was able to um, grapple hook his way on a building. Um, I believe it was the same building that had exploded. Um, he basically grappled hooked on the side of the building on a part that hadn't exploded and got himself down to safety. Um, he also reacted to an Atlantean weapon being fired at him and Aquaman while he was in his Batmobile uh, taking Aquaman somewhere. Uh, which is very impressive because these things, these weapons from the Atlanteans move really, really fast. They're definitely way faster than bullet speed. Um, and Batman was able to see it and able to react to it and get him and Aquaman basically able to get out of the Battleville before it blew up. Um, it was really cool. And yeah, and that's basically it for his speed. And if we're uh, talking about his uh, fighting speed, just remember that he's able to basically react to most of the Justice League, you know, with the exception of maybe the Flash. Um, and Superman, if he's, you know, trying and saying he's Wonder Woman, as long as the Justice League aren't trying, uh, he should be able to react to them. And his reaction time is very, uh, it varies basically in what he's fighting against, but he is able to dodge stuff like lasers and stuff, so you could scale his reaction speed to the speed of light. Um, but his uh, combat speed is definitely way slower than that, but as far as reaction speed goes, you could scale him to light, considering that he's dodging stuff like Superman's uh, heat vision and just different types of energy attacks uh, constantly as well as uh, people that shoot lightning from their hands uh, he's able to dodge that pretty point blade so he's definitely above lightning speed if you want to low ball him. and yeah so going into the next uh, topic which is going to be his tech Batman's tech is ridiculous um, he basically is has things like, um, he was able to be in, like, a vat of acid or something and not get killed off because he had, like, some type of device so that he wasn't gonna breathe in, uh, the poisonous gases and stuff like that. And you should know that he has stuff like gas masks, so chemical warfare isn't work on Batman because he deals with someone like Scarecrow. Uh, there was a scene in one of the story arts where he had to basically try to freeze some enemies that the Joker was making them play, like, this sick game where they were dressed like Batman and the Joker and forced seeing them to like dance with each other for like days or um, I believe the ground would explode or something like that. Batman came up with an idea to basically get them to where they wouldn't explode and when the Joker basically told him that he knew what he was going to do to try to free uh, the prisoners that he had, uh, he had like a second plan but Batman's so smart he actually negated and planned out the second plan and beat it out. Uh, which shows that Batman's moving even more steps ahead than what the Joker was planning. Just he did like a double step plan and Batman still outplayed him. Um, it was just an amazing moment. It shows uh, Batman's intelligence. Um, Batman was able, you know, when we're speaking about intelligence, he was able to figure out where exactly the Court of Owls uh, hideout was that they put him in to basically try to get him to break uh, mentally and physically. So that was a really cool scene and he exploded the bottom of where he was at by using some explosives that I guess were on the talent and was able to make his escape from this like inescapable maze that tons of people had died uh, being put in here. I don't think anyone had ever escaped the maze but Batman was the first to do it. Again showing his intelligence and what he'll do to basically get out of a situation. He's very smart and will do what's necessary to basically get out of a dangerous situation. He's fought against people like New 52 Superman, which is ridiculous. Um, New 52 Superman definitely does hold back a lot, though. And we can't scale Superman and Batman to each other, of course, but it is still impressive and shows that if he's fighting a higher uh, strength opponent, he's going to be able to at least hold his own for a little bit. Uh, Batman has had things uh, be made for him, or, you know, he's modified it. Um, there was a scene in the Justice League New 52 where Superman was surprised that he couldn't hear Batman uh, coming up behind them. And Batman basically revealed that Cyborg has a silent mode uh, with his recent upgrade. And I guess he either took this or he asked Victor for it. So now he has the ability to not be detected by people like Superman and Wonder Woman. They have super heightened sense, especially Superman. He's ridiculous in what he can sense. And the fact that he can sense Batman gives Batman a type of, like, invisibility type 
uh, skill, I guess you say, you can physically see him, but as far as sensing him, uh, by using your senses like hearing and that, it's not going to work because of this uh, silent mode, basically, as he calls it. And yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, Batman also has figured out and made contingency plans for all the Justice League members except Wonder Woman. And basically uh, tells Superman that he needs to be the one to be able to take down Wonder Woman. Because at this point, Superman and Wonder Woman were having like a type of like relationship. Uh, not everyone liked that. And uh, me personally, it's iffy for me. Um, but in this run, that was the thing. And Batman basically told him that he needs him to take care of Wonder Woman. And we'll see what exactly he has to do with her um, when we go over uh, the next thing in his tech. But yeah, so uh, a few things before we get into that. We're going to talk about how Batman was able to fight against a Green Lancer. Very impressive considering their speed feats and stuff that they can do and people they can go up against. Um, now, it wasn't a big, big name Green Lancer that he fought against, but he does mention that this Green Lancer is no Hal Jordan and was able to, you know, figure out a way to get out of his uh, trap in his grasp, basically. Um, Batman was hit, as well as all the Justice League, with a type of, like, Mine Hats attack, and he has some type of resistance to this Mine Hats. Uh, I don't think it's explained how he was able to have this resistance, but even Superman was getting affected, who has a pretty good resistance, I believe, to Mine Hats. I'm not sure if the New 52 has this resistance, but I'm pretty sure stuff like Post-Crisis does, and Golden Age Superman, and stuff like that. I believe a lot of Superman have Mine Hats or resistance, but I'm not sure about New 52. But uh, Batman was the only one out of Justice League not to get affected by this, or at least not to be affected to the point where they were getting like crippled for a bit. And of course, all of them, you know, break out of it. It's not like you know this d did any of them in. But it's still impressive that Batman wasn't, you know, affected almost at all. Um, very cool feat. Uh, we also you see that he has a way to fight against people that use Aqua type uh, attacks, like water-based attacks, and he was able to fight against. Um, Aquaman and get a, you know, kind of like a sprite's attack on him. Uh, this did get Aquaman mad and, um, you know, he basically tried fighting against Justice League. And there's a whole story on that. You should go check out that story. I believe it's volume 2 or 3 of Justice League. I think it's volume 2 of New 52 Justice League. Um, Batman has a suit called the Hazbat suit, which gives him a ridiculous amount of durability. Um, and this is a suit that he has, basically, and we'll talk about that more in the durability section. Um, before we finish the TED section, we do have to go over that he is the Justice Buster. The Justice Buster is a machine that basically, like, an armored suit. Very similar or very inspired by the Hulkbuster. If you're familiar with Iron Man and the MCU, it's very similar to the Hulkbuster. But this is basically made to defeat the Justice League. And he's able to fight and swap blues with Wonder Woman, which is ridiculous because she's not really holding back and trying to attack him. Eventually, he overcomes her with, I guess, some type of, like, lasso. And basically puts her into some type of an illusion. This isn't, like, some type of regular illusion. It's literally forged by the people that are like her, basically, from her people. So it made sense that it would work on her. It's not like some regular, like, mine hats. Um, so, yeah, Batman basically says they had to figure out a way to get this. And it took him a long time to track it down, but it's definitely was something they needed from the magical black market. And, yeah, um, basically, Superman and The Flash and all the rest of the are attacking uh, Batman's Justice Buster in, you know, in an order, basically. And each one of them is able basically able to be countered by Batman's Stress Buster. The Flash probably the most impressive that's predicting his movements despite how fast he's moving, uh, which should be almost impossible, but Batman has put so much money into this thing. And he is so smart that he was able to figure out a way to, you know, at least predict the movements enough to put something on the ground to make uh, Flash basically trip and get him to just crash to like a building or something. And Flash moves ridiculously fast that the building just comes down instantly once he, you know, makes contact with it. Um, Aquaman basically gets defeated by using some type of, like, absorbing water device, and that it actually, uh, restricts around the opponent the more they try to use their, I guess, abilities on it. Um, or I think it's just water abilities that make it, you know, absorb even more, and he needs water, basically, Aquaman, so it could actually kill him, and Aquaman's not stupid, so he's not gonna do that. Um, so that's basically how he defeated Aquaman, and then we have, of course, the fight with Superman. And this is where you see the massive damage that the Justice Buster can take, it has massive durability. And eventually, we get to see that it's able to take, like, a giant, like, building or something like that, uh, basically crash into it. 
and eventually Batman's able to use uh, mini miniature red suns that he was able to build into the suit to put some damage on Superman, but eventually Superman basically uh, gets out of the situation and tries using his heat vision and Batman was able to create something to deflect he vision basically turn it off um, you know make it to where it doesn't do any damage to his suit and this is I think it says that it even works for his freeze breath as well it does like the opposite of that so he basically takes off uh, Superman's ability to use he vision and uh, freeze breath on his suit which is very impressive uh, again showing how intelligent uh, Batman is and um, Superman basically has to destroy the suit physically just really nothing you do physically and stop me something that's physical for Batman so um, the suit basically gets destroyed by Superman but considering what new 52 Superman can do and there will be a power scale video for new 52 Superman pretty soon on the channel so subscribe for that because we're going to be doing tons of power scale videos on different DC and Marvel characters and yeah eventually Batman was able to defeat uh, and he to Superman by um, spitting like some kryptonite gum into his eye and basically it knocks him out. Something like that. Uh, so it looks kind of lame for Superman. He just shouldn't be getting knocked down by an attack like this. But this was Jokerized uh, Superman, New 52 Superman. It wasn't just a regular New 52 Superman. So you have to look into that when you're going over uh, the durability of characters and the technique and strength and all that speed. Uh, because they're not really themselves and they're not really in control. And that's basically all the feats for the Justice Buster, which we had to go over because Justice Buster is very necessary if you're going over what this Batman can do. Um, because he can always basically call it in. And whoever he's fighting against will probably have to deal with the Justice Buster if we're talking about like a very high-end opponent that would require that. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for uh, New 52 Batman's uh, attack. Going into his final uh, topic for the video, as always, will be the durability. And yeah, we have a few things. So Batman's durability is ridiculous in the New 52. He's able to basically tank getting hit by a rocket uh, that comes from a rocket launcher. Uh, yes, it was uh, his like cape that made him be able to survive it. He was ridiculous. He's also able to fight against multiple opponents at, at once that are all using riot gear and stuff like that. Awesome. Um, he was able to tank getting tackled by Wonder Woman in base without his suit. Um, he even gets slammed into the pavement, which makes no sense why he did not die. Uh, that's probably one of the worst things of writing I've ever seen for Batman. That's basically wanking Batman, uh, being in base and be able to take a hit like that makes no sense. Uh, but he did it, so we have to include it. Uh, he was able to put some like type of like mind uh, earbuds into Wonder Woman's uh, ears. I don't know if it was supposed to just distract her because of her super um, heightened senses, basically. Uh, which I believe Wonder Woman has, it's just never really brought up compared to Superman. Uh, but yeah, so we did that. We also you see that he was able to tank, uh, uh, tank blast, basically a tank a rocket or whatever it is that a tank shoot. And he survived it. it. It was ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying he wasn't damaged at all, but uh, he took it, basically he tanked it. And he was able to move out of the way out of a ton of Jokerized uh, people as well as a Jokerized soldier that shot the, you know, the rocket at him. And was able to dodge a gunfire after getting hit by this uh, taint, basically, blast, uh, which is ridiculous. Uh, Batman was able to basically almost get hit by a point blank explosion by the Talon when he destroyed that building that we mentioned in his, I believe it was his speed uh, portion of the video. Um, probably the most impressive thing he did, you know, you would probably think it's the tank, and I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you said that. For me personally, it's probably the dehydration and uh, the hunger that he dealt with for eight days uh, straight. Um, and he was able to fight his way through this maze, you know, find his way through this maze. And at the end of the maze, he basically had to fight against the Talon. And he basically took hits from the Talon, going through his like gut and stuff like that. Took a massive hits from the Talon where he was asking the Court of Owls what they wanted to see. And you even asked one of the kids of the Court of Owls how he wanted to see, or how she wanted to see um, Batman die. Um, so he basically did a ton of damage on Batman, and despite this, Batman was able to fight back after taking this massive beating. And remember, he's dehydrated, he, he, the only water he had was water that was contaminated that would make him, I believe, hallucinate or something like that. Um, basically contaminated water and no food um, for eight days straight, and he was able to fight against the talent who, like I said, is supposed to be like a super soldier. It's like a zombie with super strength. 
plus can take massive damage and is very skilled at martial arts because that's what their trains do basically is to kill people that the Corvals uh, have um, decided that need to be killed basically. And Batman's basically uh, hit through a wall. I believe this happens twice during the Court of Owls saga. And yeah, uh, we get to see, and I believe that's the first two volumes of the New 52 Batman. And you definitely should watch out New 52 Batman because it's amazing. At least the canon story arts that Strat Snyder and uh, Krakabulu did that aren't, you know, filler like. Um, I only read, I believe it's like four volumes that are very strictly canon uh, story arts. Um, that don't jump back into the past stuff because I just didn't understand why they had to do that. I don't, I didn't include any of that in these feats. So, um, there's probably a ton of other stuff that's not mentioned in here. And maybe I'll read that one day and we'll make a second power scale for New 52 Batman. But yeah, definitely, um, all this happens in the first two volumes of the run. And you should go check it out. Just, it's amazing. Some of the best Batman stories I've ever read. Um, but yeah, so going back into the power scale, we, um, also have Batman getting hit by lightning. Um, and he was in water when this happened. Um, I forgot if it was Aquaman that did this or if it was his brother Orm, but someone hit Batman with lightning. I think it was Orm that hit him with lightning. And it, it, it's an amazing moment, and Batman doesn't die. He, I mean, he straight up is in water, so it's going to be even more conductive, the lightning. And it did not kill him. Um, it just incapacitated him, if I'm correct. Uh, so massive durability feat. Now, last thing we need to look at is, like I said, uh, the hazmat suit. If Batman wears this, he was able to take a blast uh, hit from, uh, I believe it was Amazo. That, uh, I don't know if it was Amazo or just someone that had a virus called the Amazo virus, if I'm correct. So I don't know if it's Amazo himself or it's like a virus inspired by him. I, I completely forgot. It's been like two years since I read this story arc. But um, basically, Batman has a hazmat suit. And the hazmat suit has mastered her allegiance. It took this energy blast. I mean, Batman and Beast shouldn't be able to take this. So the hazmat suit must give him massive durability increase to be able to taint this attack. And I believe he taints it twice, if I'm correct. Uh, then he taints the attack from a meso, uh, or at least it's a meso virus uh, subject, uh, twice. And uh, I think the second time when he gets hit, he gets infected and he turns to like the meso virus himself. Um, you know, a, a type of like subject as well as the meso virus. So um, it's not like a mass durability where he wasn't affected at all. But the fact that you didn't get killed, unless this isn't a thing that kills you, maybe that's the case, and that's why you didn't, like, vaporize Batman, but the hazmat suit definitely does have massive durability, but in reality, if we're doing, like, a versus battle, he's not going to be wearing the hazmat suit to most fights, so it's not that important, but I did want to include it in the video. And, yeah, that's basically all for New 52 Batman's uh, durability. Overall, guys, looking at New 52 Batman... Um, he has massive feats. I mean, going through all of his stuff, um, he has great speed feats. He has great strength feats. He has great attack. Uh, I mean, Batman's known for his tech, 100%, especially the Justice Buster is a fantastic weapon that he's able to use in case of the fight stronger opponents. Um, but I think his most impressive thing when I was going through his run, I was reading through his run, was his durability. I think his durability, as well as his intelligence, is what makes Batman, at least the New 52 Batman, so dangerous. Because his intelligence is on a different level, and that he's able to solve cases like in maybe minutes, if not seconds, in this run. It's ridiculous how fast he figures things out, um, almost instantaneously in some cases uh, throughout the run. Uh, as well as, um, and, and as I'm saying, I mean, like, you know, the main canon story arts. Um, not the entire run. Just definitely would be way more moments if I had put the entire run. I haven't read some of the volumes. Uh, mainly just going off of, I believe it's like, the Court of Owls, the City of Owls, uh, Death in, a, in the Family, or Death of the Family, I believe is what it's called, and Endgame. Those are the four volumes that I'm using, as well as the entire run of the New 52 Justice League to make this video. So those are the volumes um, that you need to go check out if you want to see this stuff for yourself. I do recommend you go read this stuff for yourself. It's just an amazing run. At least the stuff I read, those volumes were all amazing, and I definitely recommend you go check them out. I will have a link in the description down below for the New 52 Batman a series on Cometsology so you can go check it out legally and yeah but overall um, as far as the danger level or where I scale the character um, I would say that he's definitely on peak human as he always is um, and you know in strength 
But as far as everything else, he really has everything he needs. In fact, in the case of speed and reaction speed, his intelligence and his tech, uh, as well as his durability, is very well uh, done in this version and iteration of the character. Um, I would say Batman uh, New 52 is definitely um, a threat that is pretty high and that he can fight people stronger than him and actually win. But as always, he does have situations where he would need prep time. But I think if you're putting him, again, in a battle that is very similar to what he has already fought in against, um, there's a huge possibility that he would win that battle. But if it's a completely new threat that isn't similar to what we see in this run, then it would be completely different. And um, there's really no way to tell if he would actually be able to pull off the win. But overall, I would say that he's up there. Um, Batman is, like I said, peak human with the ability to be opponents that are definitely way stronger than him if given the right opportunity. And I think that's mainly the case for a lot of Batman iterations. That that will probably be the answer you get when you're power scaling him. And it's mainly just due to who he's going to fight. And that's how you would have to decide where Batman basically lands. Because he's a very versatile character. And I think even putting a simple label of like, you know, let's say like Universal Multiversal and stuff like that. Simple labels don't really fit for Batman because he's very versatile in the people that he fights. And sometimes he wins, sometimes he loses. Mainly just due to the plot most of the time. And just he's just one of those characters that you really don't really have a way to place him anywhere. Instead of just you know, giving like these base labels like Peak Human. A strength even above peak human strength for being serious and above average like way above average uh, intelligence and that it's almost supernatural and or superhuman and with the intelligence he uh, displays throughout his run as well as the tech he's able to produce I mean the just of us are being able to swap hands the people like Wonder Woman and be able to uh, calculate stuff like the flash and the speed he's going uh, is unreal and unhuman so definitely you know Batman's up there in the tier list and if we were giving rankings, he's definitely, at least if not, uh, he would be like the bottom of S tier. Um, he, but he's definitely in S tier, if we had to really give a label for what he's continuously showing. And the people that he's continuously fighting against, definitely would be like a, a low S tier character for me if we were going to put a power scale list. But that's going to be all guys, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more power scale videos. I'm doing DC and Marvel Heroes for right now, slash villains. Um, and we're just gonna have some fun with this. Um, I have some ideas for some power scale videos for the near future in the next uh, one to three months. And it's gonna be amazing. Hopefully we're gonna grow this channel bigger and better. Um, if you're a fan of comic books, I do review tree paper bat slash volume reviews of comic book runs. Um, I go through basically like the first issue all the way to the last issue. And I have a lot of fun doing that. That's basically the main thing on the channel. But we have been jumping into power scaling as well as uh, versus battles um, coming really soon. Right now we're doing the Nartiverse versus combo characters, mainly Marvel and DC, uh, with the exceptions of some other verses. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun as we're going the channel. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. As well as like the video and comment down below what you thought of this power scale. Where do you rank Batman on the power scale list? But until next video, guys, God bless you. Until next lesson. Keep on reading those comments.